Okay, uh, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Uh, the elect begins with the 144,000. Yahweh Shai being the head of the elect. All praises and glory is due to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. That's his uh, true name. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. That's the true name of the only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Bahashem in the ancient Hebrew means in the name, Bahashem. And yes, we do have the ancient Hebrew. We believe that according to faith, the same language that our forefathers spoke. Okay. And this whole ministry of ours is based upon faith anyway, as it is written. Um, uh, how's it go? Uh, but without faith, it is impossible to please the Heavenly Father. Let's get that Hebrews. 11 and 6 so this whole ministry of ours is based upon faith there's another scripture where it says uh, as a matter of fact the book of Hebrews the 11th chapter the whole chapter is a, a, a praise of faith okay the whole chapter goes into examples of our forefathers how they prevailed through faith so faith is very important in this thing of ours, man. This, this whole ministry is based upon faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith or by his faith. Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Please who? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And his son, Yahweh Shai, right? For he that cometh to the Heavenly Father must believe that he is, beginning with his name. You, you know, you got to believe that his name is Yahweh. And his son's name is Yahweh Shai. They're, they're Israelites that don't believe that. Okay? So, uh, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to the heavenly Father must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if you're diligently seeking the heavenly Father and the son, eventually you're going to run into the true names of the heavenly Father and his son which the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahweh Shai, because you're diligently seeking him. So don't ex don't accept any lame excuse saying that we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father and his son. There's a scripture where it speaks about certain individuals have even denied the Lord that brought them, meaning denied, deny his name and his son's name. As a matter of fact, this reminds me of what Yahweh Shai said. If you confess my name, let me see if, if, if that comes up. Confess my name. Because you got certain Israelites that are that are ashamed. That are ashamed of the Heavenly Father's name. Let's see, hold on. Confess. There you go. This is it. Matthew 10 and 32. Let's go there. Matthew, the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. The subheading says the meaning of discipleship. Matthew 10 and 32. It says, whosoever, now clearly you see these words are written in red, so Yahweh Shai actually said this, right? Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. What do you think that means? Meaning confess his true name. You got Israelites that are ashamed to do that. You know, they're, they're, they're calling on a, on, a, on a name, if you can call it that, that really represents oppression. They're calling on Jesus Christ. The, one of the first slave ships that came here to America that brought our people in captivity in brutal bondage, brutal slavery, okay, the ship was named the Good Ship Jesus. <laughs> the Good Ship Jesus, man. And, and, and you got Israelites that call in that name. You know? 
their ministry is given to the name Jesus, Jesus Christ. Like I said, man, one of the slave ships was named the good ship Jesus. Okay? Not to mention that that's not the true name of the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father. All right? The letter J didn't come about till 1524. If you Google a, a man by the name of John Trusino, right? John Giorgio, Giorgio Trusino, he's also known as the father of the letter J. The letter J was an extension of the letter I. Okay, and this is this 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 is an easy research. So based upon that, it's impossible for the only begotten son for his name to be Jesus. Furthermore, one point that I always bring out that they can't get around is when the angel Gabriel was sent to Joseph and Mary, what language did the angel Gabriel speak? He spoke Hebrew. Joseph and Mary spoke Hebrew. They didn't speak English. English was unheard of back then. All right, so the angel Gabriel told Joseph and Mary what to name their son. So that's the name that you got to call upon, and we believe by faith that that name is Yahweh Shai. That's what the angel Gabriel told Joseph and Mary to name their son, Yahweh Shai, which means he delivers, he is the Savior. So it all makes sense, man. So you got certain Israelites that are uh, ashamed to do that, confess the name, the true name of the Heavenly Father and the only begotten Son. So this is what uh, Yahweh Shai said. He said, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father. His father is Yahweh, which is in heaven. See? But whosoever shall deny me before men, right, denying the true name of the heavenly father and his only begotten son, saying, saying things like, uh, oh, we don't have the name, we'll get the name in the kingdom, or, or calling the heavenly father, uh, calling him out of his name, calling the son out of his name, you know, not applying the correct names of the father and the son, you know, even the correct pronunciation, man, okay? Even people on the planet earth, they, they want you when, you, when you say their name, if you, if you say it incorrectly, they'll quickly correct you on how to say their name correctly. Now, that's people on the planet earth, how much more the king of the universe and his only begotten son. You know, the, the, the people on the planet Earth that will c quickly correct you if you call them out of their name, where do you think they got that, uh, that, uh, where do you think they got that spirit from? They got it from the Heavenly Father, man. So the Heavenly Father wants his name to be called correctly. He wants to be addressed correctly. Just like people on the planet Earth want to be addressed correctly. So it says, but whosoever shall deny me before men, denying the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. There you go. That's plain, man. That is plain. All right, so this is the title of this video here. Uh, the Persian calling sifting of you israelites is upon us now ethnic cleansing and i have the scripture here zechariah 13 and 8 because i really believe that this year and you notice right if you look you'll see when when the title came to me which was yesterday i wrote the title down so i wouldn't forget it and if you look at the date it's january the 1st 2024 right so I really believe that this year is going to be a year of now Elder Pastor said that the year is going to be the hope the, the year of the hopeful um, uh, the hope of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Matter of fact, um if we go to his channel. the Elder Pasatar's channel. Let me 
for a minute. There we go. Must have put the video on another channel. Uh -huh. Okay, this. Yeah, this video was put. Put up by um, Elder Pastor it was a re-upload, as you see here. Now, um, Elder Pastor coined the year, the year, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. The hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. So that inspired me to do this video here. The purging, culling, sifting of you Israelites is upon us now, ethnic cleansing. Alright, because uh, Jacob's trouble is an example of that. Because a lot of Israelites are going to be judged during the time of uh, Jacob's trouble, which really represents death. Alright, death and destruction for a lot of you Israelites out there. And, and that's an example of the Heavenly Father sifting his people. All right. And this guy here on, on the screen that you see here is an example. This is a testimony, which Elder Pastor re-uploaded on his channel. This is a testimony of the GMS group out of Modesto, California, if you watch the video. And uh, one of their members, who was pretty stubborn, hard-headed he was warned many times uh was brutally put to death this guy here okay if you watch the video he tried to cross the the highway i think it was i think he was under the influence of alcohol and he got hit by several cars so he his body got mangled this guy here okay he, he was taken out brutally and i really think now Elder Pastor uploaded the video on January 1st, 2024. So, to me, that's like a, a, a sign of, you know, what's going to really happen this year concerning the Israelites. You know, beginning with all the groups, all the different Israelite groups. The Heavenly Father is going to start bringing judgment upon all the different Israelite groups. Okay, and those that are not doing the correct thing, those that, that are not doing the right thing, they're going to be purged out, man. It's part of the purging, it's part of the sifting, it's part of the culling. Okay, like I put here, ethnic cleansing. And that's another reason why we ought to fear the Heavenly Father. When you look up these words, right, as a matter of fact, let's start with the word culling. Okay. word culling right here culling turn this up a little one more time culling look at the definition it says the action of sending an inferior or surplus farm animal to be slaughtered so an Israelite that's not doing the right thing would be considered inferior so, you know, very well, he may, he may very well be deleted by the Heavenly Father through his only begotten Son. You know, we know that the Heavenly Father is the one that kills. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, the Heavenly Father said, I kill and I make alive. And the Heavenly Father already said he's going to sift his people. So this, is the, this lines up with the definition of culling. So basically, selective slaughter. Okay. As we see here, people also ask, what is the full meaning of culling? 
to reduce or control the size of something such as a herd right by removal as by hunting or slaughter of especially weak or sick individuals see so this this is what this is what's going on this is what the heavenly father is doing and a major example of the culling will be uh, Jacob's trouble leading into what um, World War three all right and Yahweh coming back with the angels the scripture for that is uh, Zechariah 13 and 8 Zechariah 13 and 8 is a great example of the culling selective slaughter if you will that's another definition for the culling selective slaughter it's Zechariah 13 and 8 which says this and it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord the land is talking about America the majority of the culling will take place here in America Babylon the great the culling of you Israelites <coughs> selective slaughter if you will and it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord two parts therein that's two thirds you always hear us talk about the two thirds of Israel the two-thirds of the Israelites right two-thirds that are going to be pretty much put to death okay but they're going to come back in the kingdom as children of the one-third and that's going to be the scripture uh, Romans 11 and 26 all Israel shall be saved all right let's read it again and it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord two parts or two-thirds therein shall be cut off and die that's that is selective slaughter right there. That's a perfect example of selective slaughter. The culling, the sifting, the purging. Another word, purging. Okay? The, the purging is definitely upon us, man. And a, a great example is this guy here. He got taken out. He wasn't right. He was inferior. He kept getting into uh, mischief. The brothers kept warning him over and over again. Watch this video. The brothers kept disciplining him and correcting him, rebuking him, reproving him over and over again. He just wouldn't listen. And finally, which proves he was in, which proved he was inferior. So finally, the heavenly Father got tired of him and took his ass out. The cullen, selective slaughter, the purging. That is what is upon us, man. You better take it seriously. You know, the, the Apostle Paul spoke about he keeps it under his body and makes sure he's doing the right thing. That he doesn't become a castaway. This guy, this guy was a castaway. Okay? This guy here was a castaway. This guy here. We don't know. He was a castaway. The, the Apostle Paul spoke about not being a castaway. When I have preached to others, matter of fact, I'll get that next. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, two thirds. But the third shall be left therein. This guy was a member of the two thirds, a castaway, a result of the purging, selective slaughter, the culling. Okay? You better believe it. Believe it or not. Hey, here you go. This is uh, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians uh, 9 and uh, I'll start at 24. It says, Know you not that they which run in a race run all? And we're running in that race. All right. The, ra the race to, basically the race to perfection. Perfection can only come when Yahweh Shai delivers us. One of the things Yahweh Shai is going to do when he delivers his elect is perfect them like he's perfected. Okay, so this is a race. It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. What's the prize? Well, first salvation by Yahweh Shai, and then being changed in the twinkling of an eye, like it says in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. We're all racing towards that goal. We're all running this race, right? 
to run that you may obtain. That's a message to us brothers. All right. And every man that striveth for the mastery, right? The mastery mainly ourselves. See, that's the problem with this guy. He couldn't master himself. He didn't apply what he was learning. Okay, and it, it eventually it cost him his life. He kept getting worn over and over again. Again, watch that video. Elder Pastor re-uploaded it. He kept get, getting warned over and over again, and he just would not listen. He hardened his heart. So eventually the Heavenly Father got tired of him and took him out. Selective slaughter, the culling, the purging, the sifting. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 25, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. That, that, that's how we have to be. We have to be temperate. All right, matter of fact, let's quickly look up that word temperate. See what it says. Temperate. It says, is it on um, number two, showing moderation or self-restraint. Now that, oh self-restraint now again this guy here who got taken out he had no self-restraint again watch the video he had no self-restraint he just basically he was an alcoholic okay they don't call uh, liquor spirits for nothing all right so he he had no self-restraint in this thing of ours you have to have self-restraint that's what it means to be temperate Showing moderation of self-restraint. Yeah, our lives, those those of us that are heavy into this knowledge is truth, we live a very uh, mediocre life, so to speak. We live an austere life. We don't really get into the pleasures of this world, the so-called pleasures of this world. This guy was, he was all into the pleasures of this world, this guy here, even though he claimed he was in the truth. The scripture tells you, love not the world, neither the things of the world. You know, he received, to, to show you he had no self-restraint, he received a settlement, I think the brothers said in the video, uh, a settlement of $5,000, and he just blew that money. Wine, like, like, like the old saying goes, wine, women, and song. That's what he spent his money on. And he was told to, he should uh, save some of that money for a rainy day. You know, even though it's not a, it's not a lot of money at all, five thousand. That's in today's inflation, man. Five thousand is like five hundred dollars. Okay, there was a time when five thousand dollars was a lot of money. Not now. But regardless, he didn't take the advice, and he just blew all the money. Wine, women, and song, like the like the old saying goes. Okay, so he showed that he had no what self restraint. So he showed that he was not temperate so that's one to grow on for his brothers out here we have to learn to be temperate especially in this in this so-called world all right this so-called uh yeah like i said world man which is really esau's world right he because he's the one in rulership the wicked Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, so it's Esau's world. And every man that striveth for the mastery, what's the mastery? Mastering ourselves so we can get to, 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 uh, to that prize, which is, which is salvation by Yahweh and to be changed in twinkling of an eye. That's the prize. So every man that striveth, we're striving, even now, you know, catching all kind of hell, uh, trying to obtain that prize. Right, we're suffering in our minds, mind and body trying to obtain that prize, right? And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. What's that incorruptible crown we're trying to achieve? Well, like I said, salvation and then being changed in the twinkling of an eye where we live forever. Okay? Let's keep reading. It says, I therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight i and it is a fight not and the main ones the main one you're fighting is yourself okay uh so fight i not as one that beateth the air right 
but I keep under my body. What do you think that means? That goes back to being temperate. This guy here, he didn't keep under his body. His body ruled him. His, his, his passions ruled him. His uh, uh, fleshly passions ruled him. His flesh ruled him. That's why when he got that $5,000, he just blew it. Wine, women, and song. Because he, he became a servant unto the flesh, not the spirit. He wasn't walking in the spirit. And eventually it cost him his life. And that's an omen, a sign, if you will, to us Israelites that the purging, the culling, the sifting is upon us, man. The ethnic cleansing. The Lord is getting rid, rid of all the weak elements of this nation. <coughs> the Heavenly Father is getting rid of all the weak elements <coughs> of this nation, man. We're in that time now, and I really think it's going to really ramp up in, in this year, 2024. Okay, because right away, right off the bat, judgment came, man. So this is this is a sign, definitely. So here the Apostle Paul is saying, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And that's exactly what happened to this guy, because he was in the camp. Okay, he was in the camp. We don't this guy here preaching to others and what happened to him he became a what he became a castaway he, he was not he became a, a victim of the purge a victim of the color first corinthians 9 and 27 <clears throat> um it says i discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Disqualified. That's what happened to this guy. He was disqualified. Okay? And he was, he was taken out brutally too, man. Mangled to death by, by vehicles. Wasn't just one vehicle that, that hit him. It was a, a bunch of vehicles. <clears throat> so there you go. So... That is an example of the purging, the culling, sifting of you Israelites is upon us now. Ethnic cleansing. All right. So pretty much that's it. I mean, I'm going to end the video there. You know what? I may do this, uh, get into this title with Bishop Sakuran later when we meet up to, to do the Tuesday, the Tuesday, uh, Tuesday live um, lesson on uh, the channel uh, Apostles Live GMS 34th so you could stay tuned for that alright so for now I say Shalom I'll see you in the next one